before I go to the drawbacks, I want to my, I want to really appreciate uh, the recommendation of the 2014 National Confab, where I served as a delegate. The first recommended for this student's loan. Uh, the person who moved for this motion was the NANS president as of 2014, Yinka where we all served under him. This loan was recommended by the student's delegates and it was unanimously approved in the CONFAB. Though I'm aware, the APC-led administration has failed to give recognition to the CONFAB report, but we also know that most of the government policies and the things they're implementing from the Buhari's administration to date are secretly also lifted from that report. Bajabi Amila gave uh, a soft landing to what Tinubu has done today by the push he gave when he was a speaker in the National Assembly. And today, I must sincerely thank President Tinubu for having the political will to also see that he signs this into law. It is not easy, no matter the political interest or no matter the, the reasons surrounding it, but it is for the general well-being of Nigerians. Coming back to the setback, you know, in 2016, when I was a national president of NANS, I almost lost my life, which the petition was with the IG, because I took a corrupt vice chancellor to EFCC challenging corrupt practices and uh, there was an as several assassination attempts made on my life why am i bringing back this story to you i'm bringing it back simply because most corrupt practices the level of corrupt practices that take place in our institutions of learning mm. it's something that the that the anti-corruption agencies are not really paying attention to because the drawback I am seeing in this, as you earlier asked, is that the same way that the chief executives of higher institutions come to increase tuition fee, at any time they feel they need to increase the IGR, without us so letting the students know that every month they get allocation, and they make the students believe that it is from what they pay they are using to run the institution. That is my greatest fear because there is, they are not always sincere with the running of institutions. This loan, as the educationist rightly said, giving a loan without a guarantor because you want to make it seamless is as good as you are dashing people money. You are just giving a free money. You just want to use it to gather a database, just like the Osibanjo trade, trade, trade money, money, trade drum money, where the VP was going to market as a hawker to distribute peanuts to people in the name of empowerment. Guarantor, on, having no guarantor is not good at all, as the educationist said, because you have made it become so porous that anybody can take the money in the name of students. Because there is no way of really justifying that that person is saying, though the board that will be a student may have their own caveat, but the caveat cannot be contrary to what has been captured in the law that the president signed. So if the law has said no guarantor, there is no other thing that they can be doing uh, uh, outside what has been signed. But for me, Another setback that I see in this whole thing, in the National Confab report that we recommended, we said if a student is getting a loan from the government for studies, the government must also provide job available upon graduation so that it will not be a situation whereby you finish school, statistics as of 2022-2023 showed that over 90,000 youths have no job. And now you are providing loan for people to go to most school and to increase that number where there is no market. You have provided no job for them to get. 
I finished my first degree in 2010, mechanical engineering. As of today, I can boldly say that 30% of my courtsmates have no job. I finished my second degree in Petroleum Training Institute for 2014 on the water welding and offshore technology. The best one of the best students in my class is a taxi driver in Ware. Therefore, so it is not just about getting the loan to go to school. If the government do not provide job for this, for the beneficiaries of this loan to be absorbed upon graduation. Let us be very sincere that this is another form of Osibanjo trade, trader money. And uh, there is no, nothing that should be expected. Nigeria today is a place where the normal credit uh, app, where people can ask for a soft loan, uh, get soft loan expected to pay back. But you see, a part you see Nigerians who can uh, terminate a particular SIM card just because they have used it to, to, to get certain loan, and they go over to go and register another SIM card to get another loan from another app. Most of us who can be sincere to say we get these notifications of maybe people in our contact list who have been indulged in one way or the other. But the fact is, Nigeria as a nation have not really gotten to that stage where we feel we can bring up a seamless uh, procedure that will not be properly checkmated for accountability. Even if you hand over this thing to the chief executive, just as I said, go to our tertiary institutions today. Allocations are pumped in from government to every institution. But the chief executive officers do not live in the campus. Okay. What they do is they lift the PMS that is supposed to be supplying power to the institution, to their private homes. These are also the set of people you want to entrust fund into. So, for me, the government must be very sincere to provide job to make sure that if we have given you our loan, we have a job where you can work for us, for us to recoup our money. All right. Okay.